Hello. Today, World Socio Society interviews Gunn. Hello, Gunn. How are you? I'm doing splendidly. How about you? I'm doing pretty well. Just um, <laughs> only woke up like two hours ago. No, an hour ago. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> but I'm doing okay. So shall. Are you ready for the first question, Gunn? Absolutely. Excellent. Question one. How did you get into typology? Hmm. Interesting question. Um, I actually got into typology probably somewhere be between five and six years ago. And... Uh, I can't remember where I found it, but I was probably just surfing online on the internet and I was looking for personality quizzes, I think. And I just happened to stumble upon the NMBTI quiz. And uh, yeah, that's basically how I stumbled onto typology. How I stumbled onto Socionics specifically was uh, when I did another another interview in the past and at first I thought it was going to be an MBTI um, typology thing as well but then uh, the interviewer told me that this was socionics and that's how I ended up getting into socionics I see okay, so, so you so you didn't in, where, where was this interview was it online was it oh yeah it was an online interview as well Ah, who, who was um? Who, it was someone who it was English who carried it out, or uh, spoke English. Yeah, it was um, with an American, I think. There's someone else doing it online interviews in Socionics. Yes, I think someone's like stealing your stealing stealing your thunder, man. No, this can't happen. No, I'm joking. It's fine. Uh, but who, who is it? Um, I met this person on Fiverr. Dot com, but I don't think she's doing the interviews anymore. Oh, okay. Oh, it's a she. But what? What? Um, where? Where was she from? America. I, I, yeah, I believe so. Interesting. Hmm. Okay, that's yes, got me curious. Now. <laughs> okay, back to the interview because we're going to waste time otherwise if we think about that. Okay, I'll ask you later. I'm going to find out where it is. Right. So you got typology. Almost by accident, I see you, you thought it was an MBTI interview and it turned to be socionics. And right. what interested you about psychology? Hmm. What interests me about psychology? Well, I think psychology, it's basically an attempt to understand the human mind. And I guess what interests me about psychology is that it's a way to, in a way, understand how humans behave, how we, as a species, as the, we as a species, how we have our peculiarities. Um, I'm sorry, I'm not really explaining myself very well, but I guess. Human, be human behavior does interest me. Um, mean? And, yeah. I mean, I mean, that's just basic. I guess that's basically um, what interests me about psychology. It's just finding out about, about human beings. Okay. Yes. Do you work or go to college? I'm currently taking a gap year, but I just sort of completed my master's degree a while ago. Ah, oh, where'd you do it? Sorry? Where'd you do it? Well, I did it in um, England, in Canterbury. Ah, what was the master's degree in? Um, English literature. Okay. And why did you want to go into English literature? It's mostly a labor of love. Um, for me, ever since I've been a kid, I've enjoyed reading books. I've enjoyed um, most mostly enjoyed um, just getting as much information as I could about anything. But 
in particular, fiction fascinated me because they tended to, to create new worlds that were anal that were essentially analogies uh, for for reality, basically a, a form of exaggerated reality, and that in particular, I guess, fa fascinated me. So uh, that's basically why I went to English literature because I just enjoyed being able to observe these exaggerated versions of reality and and deciphering the ways in which they related to our reality. It's almost getting a so sort of like getting also a picture of our world through an exaggerated alternative to our world. Yeah, yes, yes, more or less. Um, I guess I just basically enjoy the um, the process of deciphering deciphering something. I mean, you it's just basically like I mean, I guess it also ties into why I appreciate psychology as well because what you basically get isn't really an accurate image of uh, what's actually going on. You need to make a few mental leaps to kind of discover what's actually going on. That that kind of process is what interests me. Hmm. Okay. So it's like like there's um the, the deciphering is almost like problem solving, like um, taking the evidence that's given to you and and trying to think laterally to try and work out exactly what's going on. Yeah. Okay. And when you were at um, when you were at um, Canterbury, um, how did you behave? What was your way of acting or being? Well, I guess it usually depended on what kind of situation I found myself in. Mm -hmm. Normally, at home, I would be very, very quiet. Um, I wouldn't really um, talk too much. I'd just be going about my daily business. But when I'm with friends, it usually does depend because um, I personally think that sometimes I can be a bit of a loud mouth around my friends. I can be a bit brash, a bit arrogant sometimes around them. I'll, and uh, most, most times they, they, they will say that I do act very, very weirdly, very strange sometimes. Although that that said, um, uh, I think it was about a few months ago. Um, my friend did point out that I usually have these very quiet periods as well. Sometimes I would just go without saying anything mm. for quite a significant amount of time, and I don't even like just um, say something every now and again, just um, when I felt it was relevant. Mm. So, I'm going to say that when you actually, your approach to socializing is one where you have like these bursts of like, um, of like high interaction, where you may say that you're almost a bit, a bit, a bit brash and a bit loud, um, possibly, um, um, possibly to um, a level that's maybe slightly more than what's expected. And at other points you get very, very, um, almost very, very quiet and you just go back into your head. Yes, more or less, although I will say that the brashness and loudness was more of a learned skill than something that came naturally. When I was um, younger, I mean, even just three or four years ago, I wouldn't have been so loud around people, but as I socialized more with people, I ended up coming out of my shell even more, and well, basically coming out of my shell basically made me a bit arrogant in some ways. Okay. In what areas would you say that you would come across as arrogant? Well, it's basically an exaggerated kind of arrogance. I'll, um, like, hmm. what I like to do sometimes is that I like to take on a very regal kind of manner, um, refer to myself in the third person, um, exaggerate um, things I've done, make myself seem like the like the best goddamn thing in the world, basically. I see. So it's, it's not it's not necessarily sincere arrogance. It's more of a you just like to put on this um, facade of arrogance as a social icebreaker. Yeah. Okay.
you know, more or less. Although sometimes it's not even um, sometimes it's not even arrogant. It's not sometimes it's not even the facade of arrogance I put on. Sometimes it's a facade of just it's a facade of depravity I put on at times. Depravity. Could could you explain more? Yes. Well, sometimes what I like to do, just to um, put people off a bit, I'll just, I like to sometimes go very close to their faces, just put them on edge a bit, um, say some very, very unsafe things to them, just yes. to um, see what the reaction is like. Mm -hmm. So you very much seem to enjoy like putting on certain behaviors and playing around with people's reactions, just to see what happens. Yeah. Okay. Um, so at the moment you're in the gap year, what have you been doing? Well, my gap year basically just started, and oh. at the moment I'm just taking it easy back at home. Mm -hmm. Do you have any plans? Well, I'm planning on maybe applying for um, teaching jobs, like anywhere from America Australia, even England again. Hmm. What 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 uh, what teaching jobs would you be teaching? I'd preferably be um, teaching in higher education, trying to um, work with like my my area of interest, English literature. Okay, so come teaching English literature. Let's see, and. Um, would you say that's um, is it? Would that be the long term job you want to go into? Well, long term job. In terms of a long term job, my ambition at this point is to become a professor. So for the moment, um, I'm not sure how where I can get it with just a master's degree. And honestly, I'm looking to try to do a PhD. And but for for the moment, I'm just trying to find um, some way to pay for the PhD degree. I see. So find a way to earn that money so you can take your PhD and become, then become a professor in English literature? Yes. Okay. And if you, I imagine that as a professor, you'd be specializing. So which area in English literature would you most want to specialize? Ooh. That is a tough question. Hmm. That's the thing. I'm not actually sure. I think that's so uh, another another thing for me to consider at the moment before actually getting a PhD. I still haven't really decided what kind of niche do I want to get into before, like what. What exactly would I be so interested in that I would spend four years writing on the subject matter? Hmm. So the moment you say you, you're kind of deliberating over, over where you want to specialize, but you're not quite sure, you're not quite sure exactly uh, how you want, uh, where you want to, um, exactly which, which area you want to narrow your scope down to. Yeah. I mean, do you, I was, uh, do, do you want to narrow your scope? Lab, I do, lab, sorry, go on. I was just, uh, do, do you want to narrow your scope and specialize? I suppose so. I mean, from from what I know of um, the profession, um, being a professor usually requires to, you to have a to have a um, certain narrow scope, so in a way I, su I suppose it's a bit of a necessity, although I do, ha I do have my own particular interests as well, although I'm not sure how viable they would be as, um, as um, topics of study. Hmm. And what are, um, what are these extra interests? Well, in terms of um, literature, my interest tends to be, um, I tend to be interested in villains within literature, mm. or villains within fiction in general. And what is about the villain that uh, interests you? Well, mm, well, 
I mean to think about um, villainy is that when the villain is constructed, he is meant to act as a as an antithesis of the morals within that particular microcosm. Within the, within um, any work of literature, there is a certain set of moral guidelines that it is ruled by, mm-hmm. um, and the villain is essentially an entity that opposes those moral guidelines. Mm-hmm. And, and what I was saying about uh, fiction being an exaggerated form of reality, I think um, that makes the role of the villain particularly interesting because our villains are basically, villains in, our villains in fiction are basically representations of what we find morally reprehensible or what any um, particular culture finds morally reprehensible. Mm. So it does interest me um, in terms of what it says about us as people in through the way we depict our villains. Mm. That makes perfect sense. Okay. Now, if you want to go into English literature, would there been anything else that you'd like to do? Hmm. Well, I suppose I would like to um, broaden my scope, um, not just within literature specifically, but within fiction in general. That so basically stuff like films, um, c- cinema, drama, stuff, stuff like that. Uh, I would be interested. To- in- Hmm? Hmm? Sorry. Very much a theme then on like, unlike um, artistic media that conveys certain sorts of plots and stories. Yes. Yes. I mean, in terms of narr- narrative fiction in general, interests interests me. Hmm. Okay. Now you said you're you said you're rather a bit quieter at home. Would you say that there are any other behaviors that accompany uh, your behavior at home, as opposed to when you're out talking to people? Well, when I'm at home, I tend to shut myself, shut myself in a lot. I uh, tend to keep keep very much to myself, and I guess I do spend a lot of time ruminating about about things. So now just thinking about things in your head, wondering, puzzling things over. Yeah, more or less. Mm-hmm. And um, as well as um, narrative fiction, do you have any other hobbies and interests? Hmm. Hobbies or interests. Well, I do try to um, get into. Um, uh, other things, but I mean, overall, I would say that um, narrative fiction dominates the um, large part of my life. I mean, I'm not sure if it would count as a hobby, but I've been I'm on I do on and off go to the um, gym, well, uh, uh, occasionally, but it's the kind of thing where um, I'm kind of like pumped to like you know get get that healthy body at first, but then uh, for one reason or another, I kind of like fall off the wagon and I just don't have enough interest in um, maintaining my body to uh, continue going to the gym. Mm -hmm. So you say that you're not very good at making yourself do things you're not interested in? Yes, it does take considerable. I do. I do tend to find myself like going to slumps when I'm forced into doing things that I don't have any particular interest in. Mm-hmm. Okay. And would you say that you can get bored quite easily? Hmm. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, I suppose I do get bored quite frequently. Hmm. Okay. How are you with family? 
with family, I'm very, very quiet, very formal. Um, it's like, it's quite a huge contrast with how I am with friends because, I mean, with friends, I think uh, most people see that, like, like I said, that brash, arrogant, or deviant side of me. But with my family, I'm usually a bit more, I'm far, I'm far, far more subdued. I um, t but in some ways I tend to um, show my vulnerabilities more to my more to my family. But then, like some vulnerabilities, I'm more willing to um, show to them. But other vulnerable, other sort of vulnerabilities, I'm more inclined to hide from them. Hmm. And why might you hide these vulnerabilities from them? I suppose it's it has something to do with um, wanting to maintain a level of respect within the family. So is, there, is, that, is that a level of you respecting the family by not letting them know these things, or you don't you want them to keep respecting you by not revealing these things? Yes, I want them to, um, well, on the one hand, I know that some of these vulnerabilities that I showed, that I showed them would be considered disrespectful to them, but at the same time, I know that um, by disrespecting them, their respect for me will um, lower as a result. So it's a bit of both, I to see. be honest. Okay. So yes, it's like you, you're, like, at least you're, you're, you're considering... Um, the effects of what you tell people around you to on your on your relations with them. Yes, yes. Okay. I mean, I guess it's in a way it's like um, when I interact with people, I suppose I think in my head, what can I get away with in terms of how I interact with them, mm -hmm. and I guess I adjust myself to match. The um, interaction. Hmm. As you adjust yourself to match the interaction. So, oh, I see. So, you, you have things which you want. To, you, you try and like. You, you're always trying to push the limits what you can get away with, but you always adjust yourself to be just under the limit. Yes. <laughs> Do you ever go over the limit? Okay, occasionally. I mean, uh, again, I tend to do this more with um, friends, people outside the, the family, so people who I don't really have any large stakes with one way or another. I mean, with, with, with like with um, strangers, I tend to make um, pretty um, body jokes. Like, I'm the kind of guy who'll make um, the most racist jokes, the sexist jokes. The, um, mm. like just basically um, any kind of ism, ism jokes just to um, just to s see how they react to it. And most of the time they'll know I'm joking, but mm. uh, I mean, you, you, you never know. Some, somebody might take it seriously, but mm. um, nev no one's ever actually approached me and said I've, take, I've taken it too far. Mm. I see. How are you with romantic relationships? Well, most of my romantic relationships tend to last somewhere between a few weeks or a few months. So, take so I guess you can take what you can from there. Okay, so they say that like maintaining length is more of a difficulty. Yes, and. I guess the the strange thing with romantic relationships, I mean, and and I think this is um quite true for quite a lot of people is that I tend to find myself attracted to um people that aren't attracted to me, but I tend to attract people who I'm not attracted to. <laughs> I see, and this is made because you. 
that the, the, the behaviors you often portray and put on are not necessarily um, accurate to who you are as a person. Hmm. What do you mean by that? Like, for instance, if you're someone who's putting on uh, these certain acts, he's sort of like this border humor in certain implications, but at the same time being someone who's very, very quiet when not putting on this act. Do you think maybe it's because some people are falling, um, are falling for, the, for the act rather than falling for the person? Oh, well, yeah. I think to some extent, yeah, I do believe that to some extent it is true. Um, I think, well, a lot of the, uh, well, for some, some of the women that have been attracted to me, they've told me before that uh, part of the attraction with me is that I make things challenging. Although, I suppose being, um, my natural self being more subdued and quiet, I'm probably not that challenging if I let my guard down. What do you mean by challenging? Well, I mean, usually if somebody makes a statement, I'll probably take that tape statement and twist it around, um, just mis uh, intentionally misinterpret a statement. <laughs> so, you know, um, so basically, um, if somebody makes a statement, they have to be, they have to be, um, I suppose they have to be careful to um, make sure that I can't um, twist it around it to something to turn against them. I see. Like, you, know, you, you take something they say, and you exploit the ambiguities in the meaning, and you may deliberately choose the, uh, the other meaning, and see if you can always make it sound that they're saying something ridiculous. Yes, 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 exactly, exactly. I see. Right. Quite fun. When you are in a relationship with someone, what would be your approach? Well, I suppose I'll be... I... Hmm, when I'm in a relationship with someone, I tend to be um, quite affectionate, but um, at the same time, I'm very... Um, I'm personally very prudish as well, so I'm not so I do um, attempt to um, get sexual, but then at the same time, I'm not really that sexual of a person as well. So there's a bit of um, so I, so in a way, I suppose some um, people can take that as me being a bit distant. From the relationship as well. Hmm. I see. So it sounds almost like you're. So sometimes you're taking the initiative, and sometimes you're just hanging back. And there's like that sort of maybe an inconsistency in your behaviors. Yeah. Yeah. I suppose so. Okay. What are you good at in life? What am I good at? I suppose I'm very good at seeing both sides of a story. For mm -hmm. me, um, it's usually very difficult for me to completely sell myself to completely sell myself over to one side of a story. I'll usually um, like usually if, so if you tell me one side of a story, I'll think, hey, wait a minute, what about um, the other guy? Um, what what's the what is the other guy thinking about? Mm -hmm. I see. So, like, seeing alternatives. Yeah, I mean, I like to um, be able to to be, to be able to say that. I mean, for me personally, I I don't really think there is a um, there is evil in the world in the sense that um, people do things intentionally just to be evil. I think that everybody has some validity to their statements. And I just and I feel that um, it's fair to be able. I I do feel that um, I have some sort of obligation to at least consider the reasons why um, some people are doing the things they do, even if those people would are horrible. And even though I would never agree, 
even though I would never actually do the things they do, I feel that to some extent um, I can't just brush um, their actions away as being done pu- as as being done purely for the sake of evil itself. And so you must um, insist on understanding rather than judging. Yes. Okay. What are you bad at in life? Well, as we've already established, I'm very bad at um, keeping my body within a healthy condition. And yeah, in fact, I would say that um, I'm much better at taking care of my mind than I am at taking care of my body. And Mm -hmm. even then, um, how good I am at taking care of my mental health is debatable. I see. Oh, so even even taking care of your mental health, did you say? Uh, yes. Okay. So as we're saying, taking care of your mind, like you're good at um, stretching your mind and exploring your mind, but you say that you're not as good at looking after the your emotional health. Right. Yeah. That's. Um, I mean, the thing is, is that um, I've been diagnosed with um, certain uh, psych- psychological illnesses, so uh, so I'm not really sure that there's anything I could okay. do about that. So, I mean, I would say that uh, at the least I'm, I'm susceptible to, um, to um, being stressed. And I suppose that in general, I can avoid stress, but when stress does hit, I have limited coping mechanisms to deal with it. Okay. So it's like a certain like phase that just hits you at a certain point, and then you're not quite able to cope with it properly. Yes. Okay. What do others admire and criticize in you? What do other side of mind criticize about me? Um, I think what people tend to admire about me um, is my intelligence. Mm-hmm. They, a lot of people do say that I'm um, a very intelligent guy, but um, they use I mean, not to blow my own horn here, but um, <laughs> I mean, uh, some some people have said that I tend to be um, quite quite moral as well. Like they say that I mean, for for all the um, hot air that I blow, for all the um, bluster, for all the arrogance, for all the um, occasional depravity, I tend I I I do have um, m- morals that I stick firmly to, and while I'm not saying that those morals are necessarily better than the morals of other people, I um, do stick quite firmly to my convictions. Mm. What sort of convictions would these be? I suppose um, hmm, one of my big convictions, I suppose, is having loyalty to loyalty to people and not just loyalty to people not just loyalty to people um, outside of yourself but loyalty to yourself as well um, in a way I suppose I believe that a man should never betray himself in the sense that he betrays what um, what are what are the in the sense that I don't believe the man should betray the beliefs that he mm, has for himself, the standards that he has for himself. So, yes, it's almost like um, no, but someone who um, goes against what they believe in. Yes, I mean someone with um, like um, wishy wishy washy beliefs. Those, um, or like someone who doesn't have any um, convictions at all. Um, those. 
those um that 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 is um like those are the kind of people that I find a little bit difficult to understand, I guess. Mm. Those people who can just like become anything in any situation. Hmm. Not necessarily. I. It's more like um, the kind of people that would betray their own beliefs just because of what, just just for the sake of a moment, where. Uh, where just just because of something that's occurring within the moment they decide that where the moment is more important than the long term beliefs that they hold yes yes that's uh, that's the best way I can put it I see so like when they're in, in acting in the here and now they go against what they what, what, what they would have been important to them yes okay mm. What do people criticize in you? I guess one of the big criticisms that's been levied against me is that I I tend to be um, very, very bad with managing um, practical details in my life. Mm -hmm. Like stuff like um, bills, getting enough food to um, take care of myself, or eat, eating healthy in general. Uh, yeah, just in general, taking care of myself, I tend to be very bad at that. And people, people do say that I need I need to take better care of myself sometimes. Mm -hmm. Does it make? Would you say that you are not much of a problem solver? I'm a problem solver when it comes to um, things I'm interested in, not so much when it comes to things that I have no particular expertise in. I see. So would you say that you're a sort of person who can, when you're working on a problem, you can come up with an ingenious solution, but you just can't really, um, but as soon as it's, like, it's, it's moved to something very, very physical and precise, you kind of lose that ability. Yes, I mean, I, yes, I can come up with a solution that's creative, something that um, is, yeah, like you said, ingenious. But then when it comes to actually applying it, that's where the problem comes. Where that's where the problems come in. Okay. Okay. Wait a so you say that you actually you have a difficulty in actually applying your solutions. Yes. Mm. Okay. I mean, I suppose in a way you could um, say it's sort of like how Wally Coyote he um, he comes up with the, all these um, great plans to catch the Roadrunner, but they all inevitably fail somehow because he fails to take it con into consideration um, cert cert certain things, and. That's basically what the, what it's like sometimes. Ah, uh, okay. So you have like a general idea, and a, and, and you have a solution of how to do it, but so suddenly you, you you'll lose track of little details now get in the way. Yes. Okay. What do you admire and criticize in others? <laughs> What do I admire and criticize in others? I suppose the people I admire most are uh, the people that are the least judgmental, the ones that can't, that um, that are able to be, that are able to accept other people. Mm. Ah, okay. So it's like a, a general idea that although you want people to be consistent to their to their beliefs, what they think is important, and not to contradict themselves, yeah, for, for, for the moment, 
Um, yeah. You also feel that it's important to also be very, very tolerant and accepting of everyone. Yes, I mean, even even those people that I say um, who live in the moment, who betray their own beliefs, it's not so much that I think they're bad people, it's just that I don't really understand how they live life the way they do. Hmm. We say it's like they they don't really make sense to themselves. I think, well, I do believe that they make sense to themselves. I believe that um, they're not just doing it because um, they're idiots or anything. I don't believe that they are idiots. I believe there is a certain kind of um, intelligence that is going um, going um, into their actions. But to me, uh, I am not able to understand that particular way of, of living life. Mm -hmm. I see. Describe your ideal place. Sorry. No, 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 go on. Okay. Describe your ideal place, setting, or world. Hmm. Ideal place, setting, world. I think my ideal world would be somewhere um, ruled by the spirit of acceptance, ruled by the um, spirit of ruled ruled by a general um, spirit of um, tolerance for others. Mm -hmm. for I mean it. I mean, I guess, I guess the world would be somewhere where somebody could choose to um, do something, and no, and no one would uh, criticize him for it. At the same time, of course, um, because we're all going about um, fulfilling our own desires, there will be inevitable conflict. And perhaps when when there is that conflict, uh, if there is no other way. Pre if there's no other way to resolve that conflict, perhaps we will have to um, in, engage in not not necessarily violence, but to make war with each other in a way. But in, but I suppose that in a way we can make war without um, the assumption that the other party is necessarily evil, just different. Just just it's just a conflict of interest rather than. Uh, one sign being good, another sign being bad. Yes, I see. So, what would the um, atmosphere and surroundings and 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 the uh, people be like in this ideal world? What would it look like? What would it feel like? What would it look like? Hmm? No, no, interesting question because I haven't actually really given that much thought about. How it would look like. I suppose it would be quite um, cosmo cosmopolitan in a way, like it's very a very kind of um, a sort of international hub, I guess. Hmm. Um, I wish I could go into more detail, but it's really quite That's difficult for to um, vis to um, visualize visualize it. That's fine. Describe a bad place or situation where you feel hopeless and fear and insecure. What would be causing these insecurities? I think for me a bad place would involve a bad place would tend to um, involve be more due to the people populating that place and I suppose the attitude that the the attitude 
of the people that would make me feel insecure is one of is one where the attitude tends to be judgmental. Hmm? Like, for example, um, I would imagine myself being uncomfortable if I were in a um, if I were in a place where people tended to be quite judgmental of others, where they were um, where they uh, how would I put it? They were intolerant um, of what they of what they feel doesn't fit into their idea of what is right and what is wrong. Mm. I see. I mean, yeah, that, that's basically the kind of place that would make me feel uncomfortable. I mean, it depends on the people, but... A place, a place where there's certain, like, social mores where, that are rather rigid, and if you uh, go against these social mores, then you're judged as being bad. Yes. Okay. Describe a good time where you really enjoyed yourself. What caused you to have such a great time? Hmm. I'm trying to. Sorry, I'm just trying to um, think of a specific moment. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, I'm not sure if it's the um, it's it's um, one of my um, best best times, so to speak. But um, well, sometimes when I'm out with um, friends, uh, like when we're going to a karaoke bar or something, I just like feel really uplifted when I'm sing just like singing um, a song or some or something. And usually, what makes me feel good about it is the is usually because I'm usually be singing a song that has some sort of meaning to me, and the meaning attached to that song empowers me to some degree. Mm. I see. So, one certain thing that you're singing, um, or certain like some sort of message, like um. Something which you think is quite meaningful and it also almost um, makes you feel empowered. Mm, sorry, could you repeat that? So it's like you always feel like galvanized by the by the meanings of certain songs you may be singing. Yes. Okay. It's like I'm expressing the message that those songs have to the world, and uh, that just makes me feel good to be able to express a certain message out to the world. Hmm. Would you say that... Would you say that is, is expressing messages to the world which you find most important? Hmm. Well, um, those messages I don't necessarily find uh, um, to be a kind of gospel that needs that needs to be expressed, but I do find um, uh, to be. Uh, I think I find more joy in the um, act of expressing um, those messages than in the fact that those messages are being expressed at all. If you get what I mean. Mm -hmm. I see. It's just like the feeling of expression that you enjoy. Yes. I see. What do you feel about the world we live in? What are your opinions, affirmations, and criticisms of the present day and the people in it? I feel that this world, um, this world that we live in, it's one that tends towards balance. 
Um, so no matter what we do in this world, the world will find a way to eventually adjust itself to right itself, so to speak. Mm-hmm. And sometimes that may not be good for us, but then the world doesn't really care. The mm-hmm. world in general uh, doesn't particularly care that we um, uh, whether or not we um, survive this um, act of writing itself. Nevertheless, I do have um, a sense of optimism for people. Sorry, um, that was my mom. Okay. Uh, do you need to go soon? Oh, no, no, no. Okay. Oh, uh, sorry, where were we? Oh, uh, yes, just your opinions, affirmations, and criticisms of the world we live in. Right. Right, in general, um, I have... Yeah, I think I was saying that I had optimism for... Uh, I, I, I generally have optimism for um, the world and for people in general because I do believe that we are... Um, that we are... that we are good, good in general. Mm-hmm. And even... And, granted, yes, we do... Um, all of us as humans, we all walk different paths, we all walk our own individual paths, and inevitably those paths lead us to conflict against one another. But it's not so much a matter of good versus evil as it is, um, I guess, good versus good, or even if you want neutral versus neutral. Mm. Okay. Right. So I can see certainly um, a few themes here that um, it, you you don't you, you very much seem opposed to the idea of a very black and white what is right what is good and what is bad, and you seem far more about lots and lots of alternative perspectives and how different people feel, and um, so uh, about how different people have different opinions, and that it's not so much about judging the good ones and the bad ones so much as saying that each person has their own their own sense of what they think is good and bad. And it's also a question of, at the same time, sticking to one's own convictions and one's own principles, but at the same time accepting that other people may have other principles. And even if, um, and it, when you actually do come to loggerheads of each other, it's um, it's okay to pitch your, yourself against the other person as long as you understand that in their eyes they're just as good as you think you, you are. Yes. Yes, I think it's like. In a way, it's a it's a battle of honor. We're just trying to see whose um, whose idea of what is right will be accepted by the times we live in. Mm. I see. And now you say that what actually makes something so if there's a case that you have your convictions, another person has their convictions, and it may end up in a battle. What decides what is correct at the end of the day? Is it whoever is, is just happens to be stronger? Um, sorry, could you repeat so that? If, the sound got a bit well, messed up. Well, if, um, if it leads to a situation where it's one person's interest against another person's interest, and, and following their own principles, is what makes one person right and the other person uh, the loser simply a question of who is stronger? Is it, does it all boil down to might equals right? Well, not necessarily. Just because somebody um, becomes the victor doesn't mean that he's, he's any more right. And just because someone's the loser doesn't mean his convictions are any more right either. All, all we can determine from the victor being the victor is that he was stronger. But that does mm-hmm. not mean that he was righter, so to speak. I see. All it means is uh, it's not really a question of deciding which one is truly objectively correct or incorrect. It's simply looking at and analyzing which one wins at the end of the day. Yes. Okay. 
Hmm. And would you say that you are someone who is um, more interested in just analyzing and looking to see where things might go than actually um, trying to cut form opinions as to what is um, as to what is the good, uh, what what you feel is good and what you feel is bad? Do you prefer to stay your second? Do you prefer to um, do you prefer to almost impartially explore to see where things are going, or do you uh, prefer to actually um, look for some sort of um, deeper meaning behind it, some deeper emotional meaning? I would say that I prefer to um, look at find some deeper emotional meaning behind this. I'm not sure how best to explain it, but in a way, I mean, I guess we are we are talking about the conflict between um, two philosophies here, mm-hmm. and when it comes to that conflict between philosophies, I guess I would say that I'm just really interested in um, understanding the um, and just understanding the dynamics of that of that conflict because I mean every conflict in general just has its own characteristics and mm-hmm. uh, being able to understand the various ways these conflicts come about is uh, itself quite interesting I think. Mm-hmm. So you're also you're very interested also in looking at these different conflicts as well. You, this is something that also interests you very much. The idea of one person fighting, uh, pushing their will against another person. Yes, yes, yes. I see. Now, you see someone who is um, who seems to be at least quite socially active, although quite quiet at home. Would you say that you are a rather busy person who is um, who has lots of projects going on? No, not really. I tend to um, I tend to have a like, few things going on. I mean, I will multitask with the few things I have going on, but then there usually it's usually a small pool of interest that would be enough for me to manage. Hmm. Sorry, can you repeat that? I didn't quite hear the last part. Right. Um... I don't tend to have a lot going on in my life, but uh, with the few things that I do have going on, I tend to multitask with them. So, like, you switch between them? Yes. That's it. And what would you say about the main, like, projects you have going on? You So you have your English literature, and... Yeah. You have your social life. What are yeah, these other big, uh, like projects or spheres for your juggling? Well, um, the other big interests I have tend to relate to um, self, to self development. I want to be able to develop myself as a person, develop myself emotionally, um, and. Um, I guess developing my body as well. That's um, that falls into those that line of interest as well in a way. Mm-hmm. But um, I think I think in general one of my big interests tends to be in relation to uh, to understanding people. I'm just I just tend to be really into um, just finding looking at these different theories of how to look at people. Mm-hmm. So looking at different theories on how to look at people. Okay. Yeah. Would you say that you are say more interested in um just just seeing, uh, just looking at these trends, looking at um um how these how these uh, these developments unfold and developing yourself? Or are you more interested in actually um, making having some sort of effect on um, um, on how people think about the world? 
Hmm. Is it more about the effect, or is it more about the understanding? I think it's more about the understanding. Okay. For me, I, I, for me, I guess I, I would prefer to um, be just be able to look in depth into this these things and understand it rather than actually put myself out there and like reinvent the wheel, so to speak. Yes. Okay. And now I want to go back. Last one I want to go go through is back into like the whole idea of the social sphere and your interaction with others. Yep. Now, would I be right in saying that you are someone who that is actually quite good at like adjusting and changing how you are around different people? Not particularly. I'm. I mean, the best example I could give is that uh, I I tend to be one of those people who's very bad at um, talking to people within his own culture, but with people outside my own culture, for some reason, I tend to be I tend to be better with um, mixing with people outside of my own culture. What is it about people in your own culture that you have difficulty with? Hmm. I'm not sure, but um, at the risk of um, making uh, stereotypical judgments, I would say it's because maybe um, Asian culture tends to uh, be a bit more about conserving space, about um, about having certain rigid standards to live by. And the way I behave around people, I guess I'm just, I tend to be very unorthodox. So, mm -hmm. I mean, e even my even my choice of study is quite unor unorthodox. I mean, very, very few Asians actually ever take um, English literature as a, a subject. So, in general, I have very little to talk about with um, other Asians, usually. Mm -hmm. And you find that with people who are outside of of that sort of uh, that more rigid culture, you find that you are able to be just be more. There, there are more ways of socializing that are available to you. Yes. Okay. And we tend to say that well, with each person, like you have a like a um, you're kind of able to adjust and show different behaviors for different reasons. Yeah, yeah, I guess from individual to individual, I tend to, like, show different facets of myself. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Right. I have, um... Now, your interview is actually rather tricky. I, I, I have an idea of what I think your type is. And um, if anyone doesn't want, if anyone who's watching, there's one person watching. They don't want to hear what it is. They can turn off the video now. Okay, gun. I think that the most likely typing for you is well. No, explain explain what I was what I was considering. Like uh, throughout this course, throughout the interview, it's why I asked extra questions because I just wanted to be as sure as I can. Now, okay, good. They're not watching. Anymore. Okay, so. Now I noticed a few things. Like, what's very apparent is that you seem far more based in your head and thinking things over and puzzling things over than you are in uh, managing the details and and looking after the the concrete aspects of reality. You seem far more intuitive than sensory. Yep. And there's and there's a general like exploratory tendency to you and just and just wondering and thinking about things. Which suggests also being intuition leading, or being um, intuitive and irrational, rather than rational. Now, um, we'll also notice that along with that, there's a almost certainly a tendency of being merry rather than serious. In fact, I'd say that it's pretty likely you're also a merry and irrational 
in that you seem almost most opposed towards that, that more uh, the serious value, specifically introverted ethics. You seem quite opposed to the idea of um, forming attitudes and opinions towards people, uh, de declaring what is good and what is bad. Instead, it seems to be more about the sense of acceptance, of seeing other people's... Um, uh, 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 trying to understand why different people did certain things, and then trying to... Um, and, therefore, and therefore, because it, in their eyes, it's a sort of... Uh, they feel it's valid. Uh, that it's not therefore objectively bad, objectively good. It's different people have different ideas of what they think is good and bad, and that they may come into conflict. Uh, this uh, sort of um, aversion towards judgment and promotion of tolerance um, of, of different ways of being and different um, different behaviours, along with your interest in like playing on people's emotional states and trying to provoke certain reactions in people. So, uh, very much suggests to me someone who is um, merry, who is merry and irrational, as well as being intuitive. Now, initially, I was, I was trying to go. I was initially I was considering ILE because I thought um, you're someone who's very much about exploring different ideas and possibilities. Seem, um, no, seem, seem also rather intelligent and. Um, and also, I, I was considering maybe uh, mobilizing extra ethics and how you like just to playing with people's emotions and and um, or almost for some sort of entertainment. Um, although I've um, going further, there seemed to be as there, was, there wasn't really much not much um, any point where you actually started emphasizing the, the logical aspect. And in fact, a number of times you reinforced almost the more the, appearance, the importance of emotional expression, emotional meaning behind things, rather than a more impartial, detached understanding. So you do, you do seem to be someone who is very, quite emotionally involved in what they're looking at uh, and what they're, what they're discovering, and, and explore, exp a more so an exploration of humans and characters and idea of morals. And you don't very much, look, you don't very much consider the morality, but you always uh, place it at a point of criticism. Perhaps um, I'd say it would make more sense as being demonstrative introverted ethics than necessarily vulnerable introverted ethics. In a way, I'd say that it could be that um, you'd be the sort of person who sweeps away um, and um, disentangles the, um, the, val the validity of moral judgments so that people who are more vulnerable to moral judgments can then act as they please. So in the way, that's why we think about more demonstrative introverted ethics. That made me wonder more about IEI as being your type. Hmm. Also noticing that your activity levels um, do not seem to be at the same uh, same level one expected from the, of an ILE. So it's like constantly finding different problems they can solve and and uh, and, 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 and and demonstrating extroverted logic. I did not see enough of the extroverted logic. Um, or, um, nor, or as much as the introverted logic, although I could see the value of introverted logic, certainly the idea of having certain principles and not contradicting those principles. The idea of loyalty to oneself specifically seemed to be about having certain rules and standards and not contradicting them in the moment. I see more of an introverted ethics, it's also introverted logic sort of um, oughts and shoulds. And also that you were, you did mention in your idea worldview that you didn't really go much into the whole idea of comfort and details. In fact, you um, you did mention that details kind of get kind of got in the way. And I was trying to wonder whether it was more about the actual aesthetic that you were that you had difficulty with, or the actual practical solutions with the with, in the day to day. So I still wasn't quite sure if it was a major weakness in introverted ethics, sorry, introverted sensation or extroverted logic. And eventually, I thought that it's probably more like to be a vulnerability in extroverted logic, just not being able to do. Um, productive, um, efficient things, specifically, especially in the um, in the day to day. So, extroverted logic vulnerability with introverted sensation as being a likely role function. And that bit, when I was asking about your worldview, you actually didn't mention anything about like comfort or in, or, or aesthetic enjoyment. Suggesting that you don't seem to to value introverted sensation as much. Instead, what I found interesting was that you were you were seemed quite fixated on the idea of when one person's will comes up against another person, you're like looking at that sort of conflict between the two of them. 
interestingly, a conflict where, where um, n neither side thinks that the other is evil. It's simply a, a question of um, pitting one against the other and, uh, and, 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 and seeing who is the winner, which suggests to me to be a good example of extrovert sensation, or at least valuing of extrovert sensation, while divorcing oneself from introverted ethics. It's not a real question of who is good or bad objectively. It's simply a question of who wins because who um, who had had the had the will. And it's from this which I think that I E I seems more likely than I L E. Hmm. Were you um, consider what what types were you considering before you um, asked for an interview? Well. Um the uh, the uh, type that I was given um, the, during my first socionics interview, mm -hmm. I do believe it was um, INFP as well. So mm -hmm. yeah, that would be IEI as well, wouldn't it? Yes, in the socionics system, it would be. So okay. yeah, I I mean I've also been um, well just. Um, MBTI wise, I've been typed as um, an INFJ before, an mm -hmm. INTP, an mm -hmm. ISFP. Uh, yeah, those were the those were the three types I've been typed before as well. Mm -hmm. MBTI wise, at least. Okay. And looking at INFJ in terms of functions, well, it isn't, there's no true correlate, but often INFJs end up with being IEI. Um, of a son can be EII, but I really do not think you're an EII. I think you don't like introverted ethics much at all. I think something which you are quite good at, and why you um, seem to be—you mentioned how you're good at adjusting yourself to different people in different relations. But you, uh, so you demonstrate it. But I think you demonstrate in a way you're constantly aspiring criticism or attaching criticism to it as something that should not be valued properly, but just used. So I think that's why I don't think EII. And so IEI would make sense as like fitting into that area. And I don't think you're sensory. Like I think that was quite apparent. Yeah, I mean, usually in most of most of the tests I've most of the online tests I've taken, I usually end up with um with um intuition. Very, very rarely do I ever get um sensing. Mm. Okay. So overall I think that yeah, I think that I'll, I was right to ask more questions then, and to and to and to um, decide IEI over ILE at the end of the day. I think that makes it seem more likely. Okay. Do you have any other questions? Um, none that come to mind at the moment. Okay. If you do have any questions, um, please um, just message me on Facebook. I'm very I'm very free and open that way. Now we're friends on Facebook. Will be easier as well, rather than going by email. Right. So yeah, I can write right. and online this day. Excellent. So with that, it's um, sorry. No, oh, no, 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 nothing. Ah. <laughs> okay. So with that, it's bye from me. All right then. Goodbye, and hope you have a lovely bye. day. Have a lovely day too.